Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I don't know if my brows are looking good or not, but you know, it's fine. We're gonna, we're gonna keep it moving. Uh, today we're going to be doing a trying new makeup video. I was just kind of in a mood. I needed to pick me up and I had no intentions of sitting down and filming, but here we are and we did. And I'm glad we did because it turned my frown upside down as makeup has a tendency to do. This is the look I created. I really like it, wasn't expecting wasn't planning, just kind of sat down and played. And here is what I did. It's almost a full face of new products. So my guess is it's going to be a long video. I just kind of, I wasn't in any rush. I was just leisurely sitting down, playing with makeup and giving zero fucks as to how long this video is going to be. So grab a snack. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that is what we're doing today. If you guys want to see me create this look, try some new products, hear my thoughts on them, and uh, all that good stuff, then keep on watching. Hi. So, not in the greatest mood. I don't know, like not in a bad mood, but just like a little off. And I wasn't planning on filming today, but like I have all this new makeup and I thought, I feel like that is the medicine I need. A little mood elevator, you know what I mean? Just play with some makeup and check out some new products. I have so much new stuff to explore here. And um, yeah, I just keep getting packages in and that's exciting because that just means I have lots to share with you. Um, I don't know why this thing is all wonky, but we're going to pretend that it's fine. Um, so I already did my skincare, which I always do before I get on camera. I always use Alginist. I have their liquid collagen. I put on first. I've been using another one of their serums that I'm testing out and then their prebiotic moisturizer. I've talked about those products a bazillion times. I do have a code with them. If you guys are interested, it's in my description box all of the time. You get 20% off, which is like VIB Rouge, except on their website, anytime. So another skincare product that I'm trying out today is from Glow Skin Beauty, and it is an eye cream. It's called Eye Restore. It says that it hydrates, targets, puffiness, and dark circles. And you know, I just, I feel like I have puffiness. <laughs> I don't know, I just, flows on her way. And I just feel like my skin always looks like garbage whenever I'm PMSing. So I just figured I would try this and, you know, maybe, maybe it'll help a sister out. You know what I mean? We'll see. I don't know if I'll notice a difference, but I'm trying it. We're just trying some shit. It says that it's antioxidant rich, infused with skin strengthening peptides, nourishing vitamins to hydrate and revive the look of delicate tissue around the eyes. And also diminish the appearance of fine lines, dark circles, and puffiness. So yeah, if my energy is a little bit off, it's just cause like I'm feeling in a funk and maybe it is PMS, I don't know. I don't know. I have three primers here from Revlon. I have like a few products from Revlon. Um, there is a mattifying and pore reducing primer, a perfecting and smoothing primer, and a brightening and skin tone evening primer. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with the perfecting and smoothing. This one is infused with B5 and hyaluronic acid. That one sounds like, you know, it would be good. On the label, it says EWG verified for your health, EWG.org. What does that mean? I'm gonna need to know. It's the environmental working group. And it says its mission is to empower people to live healthier lives in a healthier environment with breakthrough research and education. We drive consumer choice and civil action, which is fantastic. But what does it mean to be verified? Like what exactly is the criteria? So launched today, this is January 30th. Um, that's when it's, this article is dated on their website. It says Revlon's Photo Ready Prime Plus, that's what this is, uh, 
Perfecting and Smoothing Primer meets EWG's. Oh, none of the other ones are labeled. That's interesting. This one doesn't have the label either. It's specifically the one I picked out, the Perfecting and Smoothing. Um, it meets the EWG's industry leading beauty standards. It is recognized as the most trusted and rigorous evaluator of personal care products by awarding this prestigious mark only to products that meet stringent ingredient and transparency requirements. It gets a green skin deep score, indicating that the ingredients are of the lowest hazard and supported by scientific data adhering to ingredient restrictions set by the US and global regulatory bodies and providing full transparency of ingredients. Well, that's kind of awesome. That makes me happy. Although like I'm looking at the label, I don't know what some of these words are. So I guess we have to take the EWG's word for it. I need to do some digging about this and I'll bring it to the podcast when I figure out like the exact criteria and what it all means, what the actual ingredient list is, and if I agree with their ingredients and like the things that they're saying are fine. You know what I mean? Because I am like an ingredient snob these days. This is why I really rarely fuck with luxury products because a lot of luxury products are loaded in synthetic ingredients and phthalates and not to say that non-luxury products aren't and there's plenty of things that I do use that still have that stuff in it. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of it I don't know. So it's kind of like an ignorance is bliss sort of thing. And if I do know and if it's right in front of my face, I'm going to opt out. So if I look at a label and it says fragrance, I'm out. You know? Anyway, this is the one we're going to be using today. So let's see if um, if it's any good. All right, so here's what it looks like. Just a normal primer. It does have a little bit of a scent to it, but I don't know if it's like chemical scent. It's not good. It's not fruity or floral or anything. It's kind of almost like glue, which, okay, I would prefer like a beauty product to smell like shit and not give me cancer than to smell like strawberries and give me cancer. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, it's just my preference. All right, and I also received some foundations. This one is new. This one is not new. This one is the regular Photo Ready Candid. This came out last year. It was okay. Didn't love it, didn't hate it. Um, but then they came out with the Photo Ready Glow, Moisture Glow, and these are anti-pollution. I don't know who decided this was the right shade for me, but I'm thinking I'm gonna have to mix it with something to deepen it. It has prickly pear oil in it. Ingredients that will help block out blue light. It's formulated without phthalates, fra phthalates, fragrances, or synthetic dyes. All right, so it's kind of a thicker formula. This is really light. So I'm gonna have to put like literally one drop of this in it, and I think that's all I need. And I don't think it's going to alter the formula too, too much, but I cannot put that on my face like that. And that one, it, I mean, Pro Glow is a glowy foundation as well, so I'm sure it'll be fine. See, that? that's all I needed was one drop, and look what it did. It turned it dark. All right, now we can work with it. I did not wet my sponge, so I guess we're gonna go in with the Blendiful. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Fill in my pores. I'm going in with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty. This video is probably going to be really long because I'm just feeling very leisurely about this process right now. Like I'm not, usually when I film I take into consideration like how long the video is going to be. So like hurry up, you know. Meh. I'm just feeling like moseying on through the process. Probably going to stop for lunch. I got to switch my laundry out. You know, I do have things to do, but I just needed a mood booster. And like what boosts one's mood more than makeup, new makeup. 
All right, so I'm going to use a brush to apply this first. Oh, by the way, I didn't mention this, but in the one of the packages that Revlon sent me, they sent over these little razor things for shaving the face. And I've never done that before, but I did it today. So I'm really interested to see if I was going to do it on camera, but then I was like, this, I need to see what I'm doing. I need to focus here because I'm putting a razor blade to my face and I need to know what I'm doing. I can't do it for the first time on camera in case that goes like very wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I tried it out and there was a lot of peach fuzz, you know, like not hair, like dark hair, just like that layer of like peach fuzz. And it was a little weird, I'm not gonna lie. I was a little bit like, whoa. But I've seen people do it and it looks like it helps their makeup to be like smoother and stuff, so I don't know. Figured it was worth trying since they sent it. I guess this is a newer product that they just launched. I do have um, PR cards that they sent out. I should probably look at those, huh? Okay, so this is what one layer looks like here. Actually, that really looks good. I can tell you one thing, it looks a heck of a lot better than the Wet n Wild Dewy. Like, really nice, like just melted right into the skin. I wasn't sure because if you watched my video with the Wet n Wild Foundation, I did not like it applied with the Blendiful at all. But then again, I didn't like it applied with the sponge either. I didn't like it. So this one is the natural finish, which I'm fairly certain is the one that I had already. And then the one I just put on, this is the Candid Glow. New skincare inspired, light buildable foundation infused with prickly pear oil. This one is available in 16 shades, whereas the natural is available in 31 shades. So you could mix them, I suppose. You know, I liked this one, but I wasn't blown away by it. I was like, eh, it's okay. But like, this looks really nice. I mean, of course, wear, like first application doesn't tell the whole story for me as far as I'm concerned. Like, I wanna see you at 10 o'clock tonight. It's one o'clock right now. Like, let's see what you do at 10 tonight. Like, are you still intact? And then we're in business, you know what I mean? Anyway, I digress. Looks pretty good. But I just remember not being like so blown away by the first one that I was like, cause I think I did a wear test on that one. And I was like, yeah, it's nice, you know? Will I reach for it every day? No, and have I reached for it since? I don't think so. Maybe once or twice, like as an everyday foundation. As far as the shaving goes, I mean, my makeup is sitting nicely. I have no complaints. Maybe yeah, I should have shaved one side and just compared. Because it's hard to tell. I mean, does it look different? I don't know. I like the way this looks right now. I'm surprised. I gotta be honest. I did not have high hopes for this one. I <laughs> at all. I don't know. I'm sorry, Revlon, but I just didn't. I mean, they have some foundations I absolutely love. They're photo-ready, instant photo filter, whatever it's called, foundation. I mean, I've raved about that so many times. I did a wear test. It's been in full coverage face-offs. It's such a good one. But I don't know. The candid one just didn't wow me, so I guess I just, I just didn't expect much. All right, so I'm going in with the Dose of Colors Meet Your Hue Concealer because I don't have a new concealer, but that's okay because this is my one true love. I did just get this one in. I feel like I have fuzzies like left over. Like I'm itchy. <laughs> um, this one is shade 14. I ordered two of them because Dose of Colors was having a sale on their website, like 30% off, like all everything. So I was like, well, let me get two because this is my favorite shade. I use this shade when I'm light or dark. It has a bit of a yellow 
like a golden yellowy undertone to it, but I don't know, I really, I like this shade. I think because I can use it in my winter skin tone and my summer skin tone. So I was having issues with Ranger this week because he just all of a sudden wouldn't open one of his eyes. And I posted about this on Insta stories. So if you follow me over there, you probably saw the picture, but like he was doing this and he like wouldn't open one of his eyes. And if you're new, Ranger's my dog. Um, and it freaked me out and he kept like pawing at it and it was getting swollen. And I was like, oh my God, you know, does he have something in his eye? And then of course I Googled it and it was like, Google was like, this is a crisis. Don't let it go. He could go blind. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to get to the vet immediately. So I brought both dogs to the vet because the other one can't be left home alone. And he, he gets, Gunner is my other dog. He gets so stressed out in the car that like he has a hissy fit and he pooped in my back seat. I almost murdered him, but you know. So I pull over to the side of the road to pick up the poop. And when I opened the door, he jumped out and it was a, like a busy ass street. I think I scared him because I screamed his name like in terror. He stopped. He didn't go running. He didn't do anything. He just stopped right where he was. And thankfully, I was able to like scoop him up. I was so pissed. I almost watched him become roadkill. And that, I don't, I can't think of anything more horrific than that. I have peach fuzz. I can feel like little hairs everywhere. <laughs> I should have done that before I took a shower. Lesson learned. So anyway, I'm gonna just set with my Urban Decay powder. So I get to the vet and like I had called and they were like, yeah, yeah, just bring him in. And I didn't have an appointment, but they didn't tell me like they were slammed. And I get there and everybody in the whole city was in there with their dog. And I was like, oh my God, I sat there for two hours and I wasn't seen. And I finally was like, you know what? F this. The dogs were more stressed out sitting there than, like, and Ranger, he was more stressed being in the vet than he was with the eye thing. So I was like, you know something, I'll just come back tomorrow morning with an appointment. <laughs> so I went home, went to bed, got up the next day, and his eye thankfully looked so much better. So the eye seemed to have resolved itself. I think like sleeping and resting it. Like I think he was irritating it by like swatting at his eye, you know, like rubbing it. And then the more I was reading online, the more I think maybe that he had something in the eye and then it scratched his cornea a little bit. I've had that happen to me and it sucks ass. It's like the worst. So... He seems to be much better now. I'm so glad because it's the worst. It's, you know, they can't tell you what's wrong or how they feel or whatever. You can't gauge it. And me, I'm such a dog mom. I went like straight into panic mode. All right. So I'm feeling like it's 118. I got to go swap my laundry. And I don't have a bronzer or a blush to try. So I'm going to throw that on. I do have new highlight. So I'll throw bronzer and blush on, swap my laundry, and then I'll come right back. Okay, now my bronzer is on, blush is on. I used the Fenty Sunstalker bronzer, and then I used a couple different blushes. I used the Rimmel Maxi Blush in third base. I also used a few blushes from the Morphe 8W blush palette. I used these two right here. I love me like a corally bronzy 
blush tone, you know? And I self-tanned yesterday, so I'm kind of feeling it. So the cards on the Revlon situation, I just want to kind of go over a couple of them. So that foundation is $10.99. The Prep Your Skin Revlon Face Defuzzer, Eliminate Peach Fuzz for Better Skin Care Penetration and Smoother Makeup. These are $5.49. The Primer doesn't have a price tag on it doesn't say how much it is that's weird okay good I'm glad we had that talk so by the way this nail polish that I'm wearing I never wear red ever on my nails I do not like red nail polish it's kind of like how I feel about red lipstick like once in a blue moon um, but believe beauty had sent me over these two polishes for Valentine's Day and this one here it looks just like my Essie polish, the glitters. So I was like, ooh, like this could be really pretty if I did glitter on top of the red, which I did. And it is actually quite pretty, but what's the even more kind of like shocking about these, I mean, Believe Beauty is at Dollar General, so these are probably like three or four dollars for these, which if you guys have tried like three or four dollar nail polish you know it like chips literally five minutes after you put it on I put these on two days ago and they haven't chipped at all and I've washed dishes I mean I have done things and I don't have a single chip I'm kind of in awe I feel like these are almost as good if not better than my um, kale polishes these are the gel effect nail polishes, by the way. And they are, they're like super shiny and super pretty. So I uh, asked them for more colors. So we'll see if they send me more colors because I'm kind of into them a lot right now. What is next? We have some brow stuff. I have some new brow products. I did get a brand new Lancome Hypnos Drama at Sephora the other day because I used the one up that I was using. I just forgot how amazing this is probably the best mascara like it's almost better than miss your big and it is the most expensive mascara like ever it's 27 dollars and 50 cents which is obscene but every time i wear this mascara i feel like i don't need to really put on falsies and i feel like you can't put a price tag on that um, okay, so brows. I guess we'll do brows and then we'll go into like an eye look. I don't even know what I'm doing for an eye look today, honestly. I have a lot of brow products here, okay? Well, three. I have these Rimmel Micro Brow Pro Micro pencils, pens? They're pens. And then I have their Wonderful Brow Gel which is colored. I have dark brown and medium brown, which strike me kind of as like a gimme brow sort of situation. But then Urban Decay, this literally came to my door today. They sent over this inked brow, up to 60 hour wear transfer resistant brow, what do you call it? I don't know, brow gel, waterproof brow gel. But it has, like I saw it on Instagram and it has like an angled brush so I don't know I've been doing my brows a bit differently lately I don't know if you guys noticed but I've been doing more of a fluffy brow so my process of doing my brows has been completely different I do want to try this though this doesn't fall into like my normal like how I've been doing my brows lately but I'm so curious so let's open it up and take a look-see, see what it's about, first of all. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a little brow gel, but I'm fairly certain there's a brush. Yeah, ooh, see, I don't know, that scares me. A lot of product comes out on it, but it's like a brush. Uh, it doesn't, it's not super pigmented, so maybe it's not that, uh. I don't know. I'm like putting it on my hand just to see like what what it does, what the texture is and stuff. I don't know. I'm scared of this. 
Do I want to go there today? I don't know. I don't really think I do. I'm, I think I'm going to go with the Rimmel stuff today. And then I'll play with the Urban Decay stuff on a different day when I'm more in the mood to be adventurous with my brows. So I'm going to take the soft brown brow pen. So how I've been doing my brows lately is I've been taking a clear brow gel and it's almost like a pseudo lamination situation where I've been just like straight up brushing them up with the brow gel and then taking my fingers and pushing them into my skin kind of like pressing them like that so they stand up because I don't know what the deal is with brow lamination it looks really cool but like honestly do we need more chemicals I I feel like I don't know I feel like I can get that result at home I don't know I need to look into it more I like how it looks though I just I don't know if I want to put like because I think it's like a perm it's like perm chemicals and that shit's like formaldehyde and and whatnot and I'm just not about it I have to see though I have to see so now I'm going to go in with the brow pen and now that my brows are like standing up I can kind of see where my sparse areas are and I'm just gonna start drawing hairs I love the Urban Decay version of this. That's the one I use the most. But that one's, you know, obviously a lot more pricey, so. Yeah, this isn't really doing it for me. It's like not providing me the skinny little hair like strokes that I want. No, there's like nothing happening. All right, I'm taking the Urban Decay brow blade in Neutral Nana, or Neutral Nana, whatever. See like this one actually creates hairs that you can see. <laughs> So I will let that dry down just a little bit. And then this is where I would go in with the gimme brow, but we're gonna go in with the wonderful brow and maybe that we'll have better luck with that than we did the brow micro pen. I, I don't like that one. All right. And then we're just gonna do the same thing we did with the clear brow gel but we're like kind of combing through the microblade a little bit so that it's not as harsh. All right, so I'm gonna leave those for now and uh, maybe we'll readjust a little later. All right, so for eyeshadows, I have a new brand to play with. I actually did a side project with this brand and I had never heard of them. And so I, Got this in the mail from them and it is so cute. This is like a collector's box and you like slide it out and it's like a little library of eyeshadow palettes. How cute. Have you guys heard of Hip Dot? I had never heard of them, but what I learned is I, or I believe they are the brand that created Kesha's new uh, makeup line. So they had a SpongeBob um, collaboration, I guess, a few months back. And this is the SpongeBob palette. Um, but what was way more interesting to me were the other palettes in here. And this one, I would have to say, is my favorite. This is called the L palette. This was the palette I used um, to create a video for them but isn't it so pretty it's got a row of glitter and it's neutral and it's just so gorge and I love the packaging it's very substantial and then 
the top part flips out. So like here's the palette and you open it and this part here opens so like you can stand it up and you have like a mirror. How cool is that? So that's cool. So that's that one. This one here is called Napa and this one is all like inspired by wines which I just think it's so pretty and it's got the one pop of purple glitter in there. So gorge and again the cover is kind of I don't know it's like looks almost like um, agate or something and it has the same little flip out situation here. This one here was a collaboration with somebody I think Rooney I don't know who that is but this palette it's called legendary it was a limited edition pride palette but they have one glitter palette that has different colors but I mean could you die like is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen I die for that and then this one here is called Opulence. I love the packaging on this one. And this one is just like a bunch of jewel tones with two glitters. I think this is gorgeous. This palette is so fun. Like I feel like there's so many fun options. So many fun options. I love that the mattes, they've got these two browns, they've got this one, they've got this one, and then they've got something super deep so that you can like really like smoke it out. And then all these are shimmers here, these two and this one. And like the pigment on these are really good. So I'm trying to figure out what look I'm gonna do and then I'll swatch some of the shades for you. All right, so I think I'm going to play with this palette here. I don't know why. I I really am feeling super like uninspired at the moment. And I'm not sure how that's possible with these eyeshadow palettes because they're just so gorgeous, but I'm just feeling uninspired like in general. I don't know. I'm just I told you guys I'm in a mood. But I am going to swatch some of these. I'm just going to swatch this bottom row. So this is the bottom row, or actually the top row from the way you're looking at it, this row right here. These are the mattes, or they're just that row is matte. The next row looks like it is also matte, but almost like sequin where there's little tiny flecks of glitter. This row is actually kind of cool tone, which is interesting. And then the row above it is the sh all the shimmers. I'm going to do these on this arm. If you can see, those are pretty. And I didn't do the glitter, so let me do that real quick. Look at that. Ooh! I'm going to put it right there. Oh, these glitters are really, really pretty. I've used the glitter, uh, I've used the glitters in the L palette. Can you see that? Oh, so fun. All right, so I did not wash my brushes, my hair. I washed my hair though, and it's air drying and it looks like a hot mess, um, but that's okay. So the first shade I'm going to go in with, I think is going to be this one here called Merlot. You see it? This one. Okay. How pretty. So, I didn't give you guys any information about these palettes, so I want to do that. So this collector's box is actually kind of expensive. Um, it's $120, but if you Divide that by five palettes, it's $24 a palette. The SpongeBob palette by itself is $36. So it's kind of actually a deal. And the other palettes, like the Opulence is $30. The Legendary Glitter palette is $30. The Napa palette is, okay, so individually they're $30, but if you get them in the set, then you're saving yourself $6 a palette. 
Okay. That's reasonable. 24 bucks isn't unreasonable. I mean, it's not drugstore prices, but I mean, my ColourPop So Jaded palette was like $39. Granted, there's more shades, but these have 15 shades. But I'm really impressed with the pigmentation. Like, you could tell me this was a high-end palette, like, you bought at Sephora, and I would believe you. You know what I mean? It's pretty good. I'm actually going to deepen things up further with this shade here called Vintage. I'm just going to put that kind of closer to the lash line. I'm not blending anything out just yet. I'm just packing color on at the moment. This is how I roll. And I'm going to put Vintage underneath. Just kind of tie things together. Well, I really wasn't planning on going smoky AF, but surprise. To blend that out, I am going to take Toast. This one right here. And I'm going to stamp that along the edges. Are you kidding me with this pigment? Are you seeing this? Well, I would like to say that these are applying on the eye so much better than the swatches. Like you can see how beautiful these shadows are and the swatches I did were shit, so. Not because they don't have the potential to swatch well just because I gave you really crappy swatches. Oh, that's coming together. I am feeling it. All right, so I'm taking my Morphe R39. And I'm just going to blend toast out. I feel like the colors look more bright on my lid than they looked in the palette, like in the pans. Am I crazy? Maybe. So I'm now going to take toast with a pencil brush. And I'm going to put that along my lower lash line. We're probably going to take rosé and champagne, but we're going to start with champagne, which is this guy here. This does, they, are, they do come out a little bit lighter than they look in the palette. Just a little. And I'm just taking it on a concealer brush. I just sprayed it. And I'm just going to put it on my lid. I should have known, since this palette is inspired by wine, that it was going to be good. I love me some wine. I'm now taking the shade Rosé. This one right here that's a little bit more purpley. And I'm going to be putting that right in the center. I should wet that one too. Keep the same level of shim. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, so I'm not really doing great on my shred, if I'm being honest. Like, I've messed up twice because of dates. Which, oh, I'm so over it. By the way, I am going to be doing a series here on my channel where I'm going to be doing Get Ready With Me style dating diaries. I'm gonna share my dating stories with you guys while doing my makeup. That is my new series that I'm gonna be doing. I already do it on my podcast, but obviously not while I'm doing my makeup because you can't see what I'm doing on a podcast. But I'm gonna do it here while also getting ready. All right. So, I think I want to put on some liner. Do I have a new liner? No, I do not have a new liner. So, I'm just going to put on liner. I feel like maybe I'm going to put this purple on the inner corner. What do you guys think? I don't know unless you try. Oh, no. 
I don't know, that's really pretty. Okay. Why not? Um, so that shade is called Grape. I feel like I want to do a wing. But I don't know, do I? I do have some new lashes to try out and some new lash glue. The Balm came out with some new lashes called Big Fan. These look really pretty. I'm using the Balm Schwing Liner. Oh man, struggle bus. I don't think this liner is even at all, actually. But you know, this is what I'm dealing with, so whatevs. So when I was in Sephora the other day, I impulse purchased this lash glue. Why do I keep sliding down on my chair, sorry. Um, I purchased this lash glue. This is from Lily Lashes. This is their brush on adhesive and I have been dying to try their formula. I remember when they came out with this and they said that, I feel like it was supposed to be kind of like House of, House of Lashes where it was like cement, but came off easier because you know how House of Lashes like, you can't get that shit off. You know? So I'm going to use the Big Fan Lashes from The Balm in Starstruck. These are freaking gorgeous. They are so, let me put this little card behind it so you guys can see them. They're so fluffy. I don't know if the camera is gonna pick up the fluffiness. There's like two layers to them. Can I hold them this way? Will you see that? Can you see the fluffiness? There's like literally two layers. They're so pretty, but like they also look thin enough where you can still see your makeup through them. I don't like really thick lashes that just look like all black because why am I putting on eyeshadow at that point, you know? So I just wanna measure it to my eye. I'm gonna take off a little. These are still a little bit more dramatic than I typically go for, like on a day-to-day, -day, like for the gram or like, you know, YouTube, then I will, but usually not in like my everyday situation. Okay, so I am gonna say I am obsessed with these lashes. They are so beautiful. I need some liner, I think. So I'm gonna use my Urban Decay 24 7 Glide On Liner in Alkaline. It's like a deep, plummy shade. The balm killed it with these lashes. My God. So lip liner. So yeah, so I'm gonna just use one of, I'm gonna use Soar. I have one, but it is so old and crotchety that it needs to be thrown away. It's not my favorite. Uh, I like Whirl better. This one's a little too rosy toned for me. Normally. All right, so I'm just gonna go in with my Lancome lipstick in Natural Beauty. I haven't lined my lips like this in a long time. I always fill my whole lip in. So I just thought I'd play. Woo, girl, you have some work to do. I almost forgot about the highlight. I truthfully don't know what voodoo magic is in that Olaplex, but I just picked up a new bottle yesterday when I was at Sephora. It's the number six Bond Smoother. I don't have any other Olaplex products. I tried this last summer, I fell in love with it. It's $28 for this tiny bottle, but the bottle lasted me like six months, so worth it. Um, and that's the only Olaplex, I can't even imagine if I used all Olaplex like what my hair would look like. 
This is amazing. All right, so I almost forgot to talk about the highlight that I have. This is from Revlon. I got two of them. These are called Skin Lights. They're both embossed. They look so pretty. These are the Prismatic highlighters. The shade, the shades are Twilight Cream, which is this one, and Sunlit Glow, which is this one. So I have a feeling that this Sunlit Glow is gonna be good if I have a deeper, like my summer skin. All right, that looks really, really pretty, but it's not swatching beaming from the sky. You know what I mean? Like it looks nice. Ooh, this one looks a little bit lighter. Is it lighter? Oh, this one's different. This one doesn't look shimmery at all. This one looks like bronze. Like it's, like see how this one is like a highlight and this one is like satin. But I'm gonna try this one here. And we're gonna give it a go. I'm going in with my dual fiber BH brush that I like to apply my highlight with. Oh yeah, okay, all right. All right, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Yeah, it's 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 like the Pixie one that I love in the Layers Highlighting Palette. It has, it's very fine, so there's like no glitter, but it gives you that wet look, that healthy glow. I'm using the um, Splash Hydrating Setting Mist from Alginist, because it's like a serum, but also setting mist um okay so that is the finished look the only thing I was like I didn't really like was the eyebrow pen and uh, TBD because I'm gonna still keep trying it out so that is it for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit the bell so you never miss when I upload a video you can follow me on social my handle is at glam latte and don't forget the glam latte beauty podcast is on iTunes Google Play Spotify Stitcher Radio Castbox and iHeartRadio. All those details are in the description box down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys. I just want to hold you. I just want to look into your eyes.